This module will introduce you to common ocular terminology and physiology. In the second module, we will discuss the effects of diabetes on the eye and the retina. In a recent survey, the American public rated loss of vision above memory loss, hearing loss, or speech loss as having the greatest impact on quality of life. Yet routine vision exams are sometimes overlooked for those diagnosed with diabetes. In the United States, diabetes-related retinopathy is the leading cause of blindness in working age people. However, in countries with systemic screening programs, and I quote, the incidence of blindness can be brought down to 1% or less. The eyes and adnexia are connected in some way to six of the 12 cranial nerves. This slide illustrates how the separate images of both eyes are integrated at the optic chiasm and fused into one composite image at the occipital or visual cortex located in the back of the brain. This frontal view of the eye identifies the following anatomical structures. The iris is the pigmented tissue lying behind the cornea that gives color to the eye and creates an opening called the pupil. The pupil is a black variable sized opening located at the center of the iris that regulates the amount of light entering the eye. The cornea is a specialized thin transparent tissue that covers the iris, pupil, and lens and helps enclose the eye. The sclera is the white portion of the eye and the limbus is the junction between the cornea and sclera. This slide labels the components of the eye in the frontal and cross-section views. The crystalline lens and the ciliary body are also identified. The crystalline lens is composed of transparent cells whose structure helps focus images onto the retina, macula, and fovea. The ciliary body produces the aqueous humor, which is a transparent analog to blood plasma. The major components of the back or posterior pole of the eye are identified in this slide. The vitreous body can be imagined as a clear jelly-like substance filling up the space between the lens and the retina. The retina is a thin membranous lining of the rear two-thirds of the eye which is subdivided into the macula and fovea. The optic nerve is like an HDMI cable that transmits the image generated by the retina to the visual cortex of the brain. The fovea contains cones that transmit a highly defined color image. The cones work best under high light conditions. The macula is a transitional area composed of rods and cones. The remaining area of the retina is composed of rods. The rods are most active at low light levels and transmit in black and white. In ideal circumstances, the image or light, number one, travels through the cornea, number two, is focused by the lens, number three, onto the fovea, macula and retina as shown in this picture. This is an enlarged view of the macular and foveal region of the retina. The cross section of the macula and fovea identifies the neurovascular layer and the sensory layer containing the photoreceptors also known as the rods and cones. The left image on this slide is a normal retina in which the fovea, macula, and retina are identified. The graph on the right shows the rod and cone concentrations at various retinal locations. The take home is that the fovea followed by the macula has the highest resolution. The remaining area of the retina contains only rods and is not capable of the same resolution or clarity. It is estimated that each eye contains 6.4 million cone photoreceptors and 110 million rod photoreceptors. The importance of the fovea, macula, and retina will become more apparent when we discuss the complications of non-proliferative and proliferative retinopathy as well as macular edema in the next module. With more magnification, we see the vascular supply or blood flow of the retina. The inner neural layer of the retina is made up of astrocytes, ganglion, bipolar, microglia, and Mueller cells, which are supplied by the retinal vasculature. The outer neural layer of the retina is composed of the rods and cones that are supplied by diffusion from the choroidal vasculature. 
These layers are referred to as the inner neurovascular layer and the outer sensory layer. With even higher magnification, the interplay between the capillary and the neuron can be seen to the right of this slide. The pericyte is considered the keystone of what is referred to as the neurovascular unit. This slide shows the integration of elements that compose the neurovascular unit. In addition to the pericyte, we see the endothelial cell and the basement membrane of the capillaries as well as the astrocyte which communicates with the neuron. This slide outlines the pericyte and its recognized interactions with its fellow neurovascular partners. Diabetes is ubiquitous in its effect on ocular physiology and vision. Retinopathy is the primary complication most often observed. However, there are other ocular effects diabetes exerts on the eye's physiology. The next three slides will briefly review the vascular elements and innervation of these ocular structures. The cornea is nourished by diffusion from three different sources, externally from the tears, from the surrounding limbal vessels, and from the aqueous humor within the eye. As previously mentioned, the aqueous humor is a clear, watery fluid similar to blood plasma. It permeates the space between the back surface of the cornea, the front surface of the vitreous, and surrounds the lens. Aqueous humor is produced in the vicinity of the ciliary body, indicated by the white circle, and travels around the lens, cornea, and exits the eye as shown. The cornea is innervated by the fifth cranial nerve. The crystalline lens of the eye is avascular and receives its nourishment from the aqueous humor. It has no innervation. The iris is supplied by the ciliary artery and is innervated by the third cranial nerve. Thank you.